Alright, so welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the element of space and in particular how to organize space for the purpose of creating an emotion. Right, so we're taking a look at The Burial at Ornans by Gustave Courbet. He was a French realist painter in the mid-1500s and if you've taken a look at our other videos right, you should uh, be able to notice or identify some of those strategies that were in place for creating a sense of space such as use of background, foreground, middle ground, overlapping, senses of scale, uh, etc. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to just jump right in and uh, start taking a look at how we can organize the space, not just create it. Okay, so our learning goals. All right, we need to know how space can be organized and we're going to be looking at four specific strategies and we're going to be also learning these so that we can then start to classify or sort images based on those different spatial organizations. Uh, and then also, and lastly, we need to be aware of how space can be manipulated in order to create emotion in the viewer. So as we're going through these four different strategies, right, I'm going to be sort of talking about some of the feelings that some people might get when looking at images that use some of the strategies that we're going to identify today. Our first strategy is to be thinking about shallow space. Right? So what this does is actually creates a fair bit of intimacy with the viewer because the viewer is kind of thrust into the space of the main subject. Right? So in this case, um, right, the, the background is kind of ambiguous, um, but there's also a sense that there isn't a great deal of, of illusionistic space that I could walk in, literally walk into this picture and keep walking and walking for kilometers on end. Right? So the background and the foreground visually really kind of come together and don't create that idea of infinite depth. Um, and when this happens, it creates a sense of uh, immediacy or intimacy with the viewers. Those, like uh, this monk and I are sharing a space uh, and that we, we're aware of each other and we're able to interact with each other very, very easily. And we're kind of almost forced into this relationship because the the depth of the image is so shallow. Our second image is by the American painter Andrew Wyeth. Uh, he was a watercolorist in the mid-1900s and his image of Christina's world um, is, is quite well known in uh, Western art circles, uh, taking a look at American realism. All right, and here we, again we can see these strategies at play of the idea of scale and the placement of objects within the foreground versus the background. Right? But there's also, through those strategies, the idea that the, the um, in this case, Christina, can walk on or that we could enter into this space and, and join Christina and walk, keep walking, right? not only just to the house, but there's almost that sense as though the, the space is continuing beyond the rise of the hill here through the various conventions that are at play. Right? So this creates a sense of vastness or the idea that you know, things are going on uh, for quite a while. There's a sense of journey, of exploration that can go along with uh, deep space uh, as well. Okay, so we have these two, two strategies, shallow and deep, right, in order to kind of create that overall um, awareness of, of how far the illusion of space is going to be created within the artwork. Okay? But we also have the how, how filled the image can possibly be as well. Right, so taking a look at Edward Hopper's Nighthawks from 1942, uh, again, an American realist uh, who uses a little bit more uh, radical color uh, and is a little bit more kind of stylized as well with his approach to painting. But there is a great sense of emptiness that is emphasized as there's this large area that only has four people. Right? And they're all inside and there's you know, physical distance that we can see between um, the, the man in white versus the couple that are sitting at the counter versus the man who is completely isolated. And there's, there's like literally like lots of space in between the figures. But on, on top of that, right, it's, we see the entire street corner and there's nobody there. So the main subjects occupy a very, very little um, space within the composition or on the canvas and there's a dominance of negative space in order to kind of create that sense of being um, again isolated or alone um, that uh, is kind of integral to this 
particular piece and uh, pieces like this because we want to set get a sense of of that sense of isolation or you know being um, on your own on a particular journey. Lastly, we're going to be taking a look at um, a piece called uh, uh, the Hour of Cow Dust, and this comes from the the Punjab province in India. Uh, it was created in the 1790s, uh, and this is the communicating an idea of congested space, right? This one also uses the element of shallow as well because the, the buildings here kind of are, are kind of flat and they really move forward into the composition even though scale is being used as well, right? And because of the, the architectural structures being close to us, it makes all of the action that is happening down in the foreground of the image even um, even busier. Right? There's a lot going on in this particular image. There isn't a lot of negative space that allows for us, for the eye, to kind of wander freely and at a relaxed pace throughout the composition like there was in the um, Nighthawks painting by Edward Hopper. Right? So there's lots of things going on. Positive space is dominating. Um, there's very little of the background space visible, right? So in this case, the background is literally just this stretch across the top. It is a, right, maybe what, a tenth of the entire composition is devoted to that, that um, background negative space. Everything else is filled with details, right? And this creates that feeling of being completely overwhelmed or swallowed up in the hecticness of uh, urban life in particular. Okay. So we have four strategies. We have the idea of the shallow, the deep, right, in terms of uh, that overall sense of depth that can be created in an image. But we also have the idea of how that space can get filled by thinking about how empty or how crowded or congested the space actually is. So hopefully these will provide you with some interesting ideas and strategies in developing your own work. If you have questions, please make sure that you're asking your teacher. Uh, um, and always, good luck. If you have any questions, please ask. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye.